Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to another Quick Tank review. This time we're looking at the A44. This is a tier 7 Russian medium tank, and it is very interesting because it has a rear mounted turret and the highest alpha damage gun on a tier 7 medium tank in the game. If you're looking for a very unique tank at tier 7, and you want to have the speed and maneuverability to get around the battlefield, also have tools such as very thick frontal armor in places and a gun that is competitive on heavy tanks then look no further the a44 may be the tank for you and if not stay tuned anyway and i'll tell you exactly how you can take these things out effectively on the battlefield so the a44 has average health 1100 hit points at tier 7 that's 50 less than the comet but it weighs a good chunk more this tank weighs 39 tons when it's fully equipped that's heavier than most of the other tier 7 medium tanks. Of course, you don't really want to be ramming into a Chiri or into a Panther, unless you really need to. Now, this tank has a fantastic engine of 600 brake horsepower, which means that it is in no way sluggish around the battlefield. And with a fantastic top speed limit of 59 kilometers an hour, it's able to quickly traverse the map, react to the situation and get where it's needed pretty darn quickly. Now, unlike the Comet, this thing has got really good traverse speed at 44 degrees a second, which means that it's able to turn the tank quickly to re-engage targets. And that's really important when having a rear-mounted turret, because of the large profile of the side of this tank, you need to be able to quickly turn the tank to face your enemies and use the frontal armor. And that's because this tank has very thick frontal armor in places of 150 millimeters, 60 at the side and 60 at the rear. Now 60 at the side is, is still very healthy for a medium tank and because of the rear mounted turret if you side scrape round corners enemies can still have a really hard time trying to go through the side of your tank especially if they try and hit your tracks. When we look at the Comet as an example the Comet has only got 76mm of frontal armor, 43 at the side. Having that extra thickness on the A44 can go a long way especially when you're engaging lower tier targets and you want to take them out without really taking any damage at all. That ridiculously thick frontal armor is very useful also if you want to ram your targets and having a 39 ton tank ramming you at 59 kilometers an hour with 150 millimeters of frontal armor is absolutely devastating and I'll show you some of the results in the gameplay. Now don't be fooled this 150 millimeters is not all over the front plate. Let's just take a quick look at what tank viewer and I can show you exactly where the weaknesses are. So here's our A44, we can see a key down the bottom and we can clearly see that there's only 150 millimeters of armor in two places on the tank, at the top of the lower plate and on this less angled ridge line here. These two places are still very useful. This location is more or less an auto bounce no matter what shoots you. And as long as you angle, this upper part of the lower plate is still very thick and it's hard to get through for most targets. Outside of these two bands, we can see that the tank has 75 millimeters of frontal armor. The lower plate is the clear place to shoot this tank frontally. It's slightly angled as we can see here, but this really isn't going to negate large caliber rounds from many of the targets the A44 will meet. Still, the upper plate is very, very, very well angled and at 75 millimeters thick, if you angle it like this, it's quite often an auto bounce from most of the targets that you'll meet. More importantly, when we compare this armor to, for example, against the T-43, when we compare it against the Comet, when we compare it against the new Chi-Ri, when we compare it against the T-20, really this frontal armor is amazing, and the only medium tank that's even slightly competitive with it is the Panther. As we can see, the side armor down the tank is 60 millimeters on both sides. This can be very useful at bouncing lower tier targets at very long ranges, or even close up and just getting lucky because of the angling on the turret. Interestingly as well, the back of the tank is 60 millimeters. So if you know you're about to take a shot in the back, which you really shouldn't considering the amazing track traverse of this tank, angling at 45 degrees can still give you a chance to bounce. Now the tank does have a clear weak point, which is the cupola on top. We can see right at the top that it's 60 millimeters thick. However, it does have two bands of 120 millimeter armor. And this can pull off quite a lot of bounces. Make sure that if you're engaging the A44 that you don't hit this band or this band because it will most likely bounce. You really need to hit the top of the tank. And that's something that not a lot of people think. They think, I'll just aim into the middle of it, hoping that it's one giant weak point. We can also see that this rear cupola here, so to say, is not actually modeled. And so don't try to engage it. We can see that the gun shield on the tank is 120 millimeters thick, but it has nothing behind it. So if you do overmatch, 
this spaced armor, then do just fire straight at the gun, you should go through. So overall, the armor on the A44 is incredible. And just a quick correction that when you do get the upgraded turret on the tank, that its armor clearly is 90 millimeters all the way around. So, so far you know it's highly mobile, it's got pretty darn good armor, and if you think it's going to have a terrible gun, then you might be right and you might be wrong at the same time. The top gun on this tank is a 107 millimeter, and if you played the T-150, then basically this is the same gun. It fires 5.71 rounds a minute, with 167 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds and 219 on its premium rounds. Also, considering the caliber of this gun, the HE rounds with their 54 millimeters of penetration can be used quite effectively against softly armored targets. Now this is where the good news ends. This tank has got 0.45 accuracy, which is pretty darn horrific, and it's got 3.4 seconds aim time. Now this is exacerbated by the fact that this tank cannot use vertical stabilizers. And really with 3.4 second aim time, you have to use an enhanced gun laying drive. When we compare this, for example, against the Comet with its 2.3 second aim time and the fact that it also can use vertical stabilizers, you'll see in the gameplay just how long we have to aim with this 107 before it gets remotely accurate. So a game style that I've liked to develop in the A44 is just front up, close brawling. You don't need to be accurate and you don't need to aim for a very long time in close quarters combat. And that's where I like to take the A44. Now the turret traverse on this tank is okay at 38 degrees and its view range is pretty darn good at 370 meters. That's competitive for example against the Chi Ri and it's only 10 meters view range less than the Comet. So just to give you another comparison of the A44 versus the Comet, which you guys may know is probably my favorite tank tier for tier in the game, I want to compare the gun performance for you and that's something that tankcompare.com does really well. So the reload time in the A44 is 10 and a half seconds, whereas in the Comet, it's 3.9 seconds. Very interestingly, the gun depression in the A44 is one of its major weak points at minus three degrees. And obviously the Comet has probably some of the best gun depression in the game at minus 12 degrees. Now, when we aggregate the rate of fire and the alpha damage, we can see that the A44 has pretty poor DPM at 1,713 HP per minute whereas the Comet absolutely stomps all over most tanks at its tier with 2,153. So the gun on this tank could be argued to be very underwhelming, but I say play the tank to its strengths, engaging close quarters combat where it does not need accuracy, it doesn't matter that it's got 3.4 second aim time, where you can negate the fact that it's only got three degrees of gun depression and simply brawl your enemies to death. Anyway, that's quite enough. Let's take a look at some gameplay. So here we go, we're playing on Secret Line. We're in a really nice matchup where we're against only three tier 7 tanks and the rest are tier 6s. And that really is the sweet spot for the A44. The fact that this tank has got pretty darn good armor for a medium tank means that when you get to engage equal and lower tier targets, the A44 absolutely excels. It really does. Secret Line is also a, a nice place for this tank because of the, the poor gun depression. You've only got three degrees of gun depression, which means that being able to engage in city maps really can help you out a lot. So you can see here I'm taking an aggressive position and I'm going to be using the rear mounted turret of this tank to side scrape. So we spotted a tiger and look just how long the aim time is on this gun. It's not very good at all. I don't have a penetrating shot there. I'm, th I'm thinking about reversing to go back and look how long we have to aim after we've done it. I fired blind at the KV-1S, not sure if I hit him or not. I might have been able to fire clutch at the Tiger. Keep in mind just how bad the aim time is on this tank. So now we can see a Type 58, but we've got a nice shot there on the T-25-2. Unfortunately, our shot went straight into his track. It was it was not very well aimed. Should have aimed for a little bit longer at his front plate. So this M6 wants to block the weight. That's cool. We fire one in there at the Type 58. However, the armor was very well angled. There's a bit of confusion going on with our team. But there we go. We finally put our first hit in and we did 296 damage with that shot. 
That one unfortunately just went left. You can see the poor accuracy there. And hit the pillar. But at least now that pillar is gone. So we're just going to side scrape out. We bounce two shots. Actually, we absorb one shot into our track and bounce one shot from the T25 too. I decide that it's getting a little too hot in there and I'm worried about what's happening on the eastern flank. As you can clearly see, we're being overwhelmed. Now, I could have stayed down there and I could have had a really good game. And there's a very good example of the accuracy in the aim time. Very underwhelming. So I kind of tunnel vision there. Look at the aim time. We have to aim for so long to be able to engage those ARLs. But when we put our shots in, we do a large amount of alpha damage. So again, side scraping to Churchill 1. Aim, 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 aim. And we hit and we shave off such a huge amount of his health. He's bouncing off our armor because we've got it very well angled. Looking back on that shot, it would have probably been better if I had shot him in the turret because the Churchill has very weak turret armor. You guys are getting an idea of the kind of gameplay. I tunnel vision a little bit there and the ELC comes out of nowhere. But we put another meaty hit in against a tier 6 heavy tank doing 294 damage. And these aren't even high rolls, these are just below the baseline. Really, I, I, I can't stress just how much this is showing the, the qualities of this gun. And some of you will be very frustrated by it. We see the ELC, we fire clutch. And I miss a lot in the A44. I think I have something like 75 or 80 or even 90% accuracy in most of my tanks. But in the A44, I have much, much worse. And that's because I like to fire clutch at the targets. Fortunately, that one flew true. And the alpha damage on this tank was able to take out the ELC before he was able to escape. The Tiger just grazes me. So I fire into the T-150 there, set him on fire. He fires an HE round at me that does barely anything because of the very nice frontal armor and the fact that he also hit my track. Thankfully, due to our 167 millimeters of penetration, we're able to blitz through the front of this M6, and he's just unable to penetrate us. And that's what this tank does very well. If I'd been in a Comet, I would have definitely been penetrated by both of those tanks. You saw a really nice roll for the first time this game, 344 alpha damage on the Tiger. And our track absorbs the damage, thanks to the, the really great side armor of the tank. Finally, the Tiger penetrates us. Let's take a look. See all the bounces on the upper plate? That one was a bit interesting that that one didn't bounce. But bounce there, bounce there, bounce there. Lower plate pen. And now we're putting on our bacon vision to try and pick up the top gun against the artillery, trying to sniff him out. We'll just speed up the replay a little bit. And there he is. Put a nice big shell into him. And then start our, our evasive maneuvers. Thankfully he misses us. And that's a good feeling when you know you get to secure the top gun against the GW Panther at the end. It looks like I did the spin of win as well for some reason. How ridiculous was that? Anyway, let's take a quick look at the post-game stats. So that game was really representative of the A44. We got a fantastic result, getting a 7,000 experience triple and the steel wall and the top gun medal. We picked up 3,600 damage, even though we did donk a few of our shots. And we didn't exactly have to play remarkably well to get a huge amount of base experience of 1,542. We fired 20, and due to the accuracy of the gun, we only hit 16. But of those 16, the fact that the caliber is so high and the penetration is so good, 15 penetrated. We took 15 hits that game, and only 9 of them penetrated, giving us a potential damage received in a tier 7 medium tank of 3,050. Hopefully this replay highlighted what I was saying in the garage. 
but the fact that up close, the accuracy and the aim time of this gun doesn't matter. All that matters is that you've got great alpha damage, and due to the caliber of the gun, your regular AP rounds have got pretty darn good penetration. And if you really need to penetrate the target, if you load an APCR, it feels a lot more justified firing an APCR round with 300 alpha damage than loading one in the Comet, for example, and doing 145 alpha damage, I think it is. So anyway, let's take a look at some more gameplay. So we're playing in an encounter game on mines. This is again a really good matchup for this tank. But this replays to highlight something else that I really like to do in my A44. And that is gigantic rams, as hopefully we're going to see in this gameplay. So we can see that the A44 is, is rather quick. We're able to keep up with that T150 in front of us due to the great horsepower of the engine and also the top speed limit. We are going to contest the hill on mines and we are one of the best tanks to do so. We're fast and when we get up there, we are hella dangerous. So we fire a clutch shot there at the Crusader. I decide that it's not worth getting shot in, uh, in the side from the, the KV-1S and the Type 58. So I just pick up a free kill on the Crusader. And we can see that the KV-13 and the KV-1S there are looking at us with hungry eyes. Now notice how the gun depression means that I can't actually shoot these guys mostly. We go out and we take four hits as if it was nothing really. And try and put a shot into the KV-13, but unfortunately we can't. So again, check out the gun depression. We can't actually use the gun depression here. I have to go forwards, expose my frontal armor to be able to get the shot but at least we managed to fire clutch into his turret there. That was very lucky that that one penetrated considering the accuracy of this gun. So we can use our rear mounted turret to uh, go sideways, expose very little of our tank, and then angle our tank to be able to bounce the shot due to the great track traverse. This is what's very important. So I misjudged the caliber of that KV-1S gun. He's not actually using the 122. But we're able to take him out when our friend reverses. So yeah, I, I completely misjudged the KV-1S there. I didn't... I must have thought that he's a KV-1S. He will be using the 122. Okay, he's fired. Now I get to shoot him twice. Do you know what I mean? But I made a misplay and it looks like he was using a lower caliber gun. So he was able to slam me in the side a few times. And so yeah, if you do just give the enemies your side armor, you really are going to be struggling. So right now I'm trying to police the hill, stop the enemy from being able to cap. I do just spot the artillery, but I don't seem to care about him right now. I'm just looking for these shots into the town. Put a good hit there into the Churchill, and this game's looking uh, a lot more secure now. Waiting for the VK to show himself, doesn't look like he wants to. And this is where it's very satisfying to have large amounts of alpha damage. We just shaved off a huge chunk off that BK. A third of his health due to the, the high roll. And another high roll. And a fire. Those two shots did 700 damage. And that's where this tank really doesn't feel like a medium at times. Now we can see the artillery. Aim time pretty bad. But once we give it enough time, we're able to um, engage. So this Jackson's finding it very hard to be able to penetrate us at range. We see a Stug. Okay, Mr. Stug. What are we going to do? And there's a PZNA on my flank as well. He's coming right for me. This is going to be hilarious. Boom! One hit the Stug. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you saw how little damage we took from ramming that stug. We took him out in one hit. And then the PZA was obviously torpedoing and we reversed to get in his way and take him out. Oh, it was simply brilliant. 
that's just one thing I'd like to highlight about the A44 is that it's just so much fun when you do get a chance to just absolutely ram the crap out of an enemy tank. And it's very effective. For example, against, say, a Cromwell or a Comet, you're nearly a third heavier than them. Plus, you have all the frontal armor. You have a top speed bonus as well over them. If you get a good hit, you could probably do upwards of maybe 400 damage with this tank in a ram engagement. You'll probably take about 250 to 300 as well. But in certain situations, it's best to do that. And if you can slap in then also your high alpha damage shot of 300 average, then you can kind of do a one-hit combo. Anyway, let's take a quick look at some post-game stats. So we were able to get the steel wall and the top gun again, and even though we were only able to penetrate 9 shots, we were able to do 2,700 damage due to the ramming and also that lucky fire. Again, we took 2,000 potential damage and we still had some health left at the end, and that doesn't take into the count that we lost quite a lot of health during those ram engagements. And one thing that that replay highlights for me is just how fun this tank is. That's why I love tier 7 medium tanks. You can just bomb it around, have some fun, and there's still that opportunity when you get into food for example a tier 8 or a tier 9 game that you really have to carry. One thing I'd like to highlight as well is that I feel that the A44 crew skills can make a huge difference on this tank. One, I seem to get ammo racked a lot on this tank and so you can see that I've already taken safe stowage on my loader. Two, penetrations on the lower plate here quite often cause engine damage and you even get your engine damaged if they seem to shoot you in the side quite a lot as we saw in that last gameplay replay against the KB-1S. And so I strongly recommend that you take preventative maintenance. And if you can afford it, I do recommend to use automatic fire extinguishers on this tank. This is kind of frustrating as I would love to use controlled impact on this tank, but I simply can't afford to lose the repairs. Now I would love to show you more gameplay, especially against higher tier targets, but I do want to keep these reviews as quick and concise as I possibly can. I felt that the two replays that I've shown you were representative of the capabilities of the A44, and they also highlight some of the weaknesses. I fully recommend this tank. I love it. I kept it even though I've already unlocked the object 416, and this is a tank that I'm playing every day at least once just to keep my crew skilling up because I feel that the A44 with a very highly skilled crew could be an absolute machine. And it's kind of like a yin yang with the Comet in a way. It's nothing like the Comet, but it has such a good feel at tier seven that I really like this tank and I can't recommend it enough. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did or you found it useful, please consider rating it down below. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know what you think about the A44 in the comments. Did you absolutely hate it? Did you like it? Do you agree with me about the idea on preventative maintenance and how much of a difference it can make to the A44? Let me know what you think. Anyway, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned because I'm going to be posting up some other replays of the A44, but I simply can't all fit into this quick tank review. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.